Okay. There you go. Great. All right. Well, welcome to installment number two. And uh, uh, the first question I have is, uh, does anyone have any, any questions about uh, what we discussed last week? And, uh, or any questions that's uh, popped up that uh, just can't wait? I have, a, I have two questions. Okay, let's hear them. So um, can you walk through the overall process of going through the test? Because I went on the um, website, the ARRL website, and one of the things that you have to have that I understand for the test is um, you have to have an FRN number. Yes. And, and could you kind of like walk through that so we can make sure that we're prepared so that we don't have anything <clears throat> that we're missing for the test? Okay, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, all right. The, uh, the reference in the uh, ARRL uh, website uh, probably gave you a link to uh, the FCC. And uh, you click on that link uh, to establish your FRN. Uh, it'll ask you the usual questions, name, address, blah, blah, blah. I believe they still ask you for uh, a social security number. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there are some people who don't want the government to know their social security number. I've, I've actually had people uh, come to us like that. So uh, after, after you fill out the information, uh, it'll crank a little bit and uh, pop up a, a certificate that you can uh, print up that has your uh, your file number and uh, everything you do uh, on the FCC is going to be uh, based pretty much on that uh, uh, FRN number so it's uh, it's easy it's free and uh, you know, you're, you're lucky because uh, the FCC has been threatening to uh, put a $35 uh, application fee in now so uh, let's Hope we'll uh, finish the course. You'll get your call letters without having to uh, pay any money. You know, I'm again that kind of stuff. And uh, oh, uh, one other thing: uh, if you don't want to share your address, because uh, when you get your call letters, uh, your address will be visible on a public database. When uh, someone looks up your uh, call letters on the FCC uh, ULS database, it, it'll come up. If you don't want that to uh, pop up, you can use a post office box. The FCC is just uh, interested in getting a dependable way of contacting you. Because uh, no, according to the rules, if they uh, try contacting you and you don't, you don't answer, then uh, your license is gone. So now it doesn't happen very much. Uh, we're a bunch of lawful people, mostly. Okay, uh, any other questions? Well, that was good. That, that, uh, that answered pretty much my question. So before we, we uh, uh, you know, go for our, our you know, test, we have to make sure we have the FRN number and, and any, any other type of, uh, we have to present that to the person that is going to be testing us, right? Right. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of different ways of doing uh, doing the test. Uh, if you can find some uh, some in person tests, fine. Uh, a lot of testing is done uh, online right now, and uh, later on in the uh, in the semester, we'll get uh, someone who's uh, actually gone through it. I, I suppose I can uh, pester my daughter again uh, since uh, she uh, she got her license. Uh, well, she took the she took the course with us and then uh, got her license online. She lives in Denver, and uh, uh, with with that, we'll we'll go, we'll go through uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, for any of the sessions, it's going to cost you fifteen dollars. Most m most of the jurisdictions will uh, charge fifteen dollars, and you're going to have to have uh, a good piece of ID, legal ID to uh, show. I know we, we only ask for one, uh, others ask for uh, two. And uh, that's as far as it uh, goes. Okay, anything else? 
All right. Uh, share screen and Okay, I'm just going to give this a uh, real short thing, a little, an introduction to ham radio. Uh, I, I find that if I uh, pop this thing up to its full size, you can't see it. So uh, here it is. Uh, this is the Hazel Park Amateur Radio Club. We have two calls, W8HP and W8JXU, uh, one for each of our repeaters. And uh, during uh, our field day exercise, we use W8HP as the main call and uh, we uh, get the uh, beginner station on W8GXU. We are a member club of the American Radio Relay League. That's our national association. I'm uh, not aware of any others uh, right now. And uh, it was established in 1914 because uh, Radio stations, uh, ham radio stations only had a range of about 50 miles. So uh, sometimes they'd have to ha ask somebody to forward a message along. It got to uh, be a big thing. And uh, even today we have uh, ways of getting a radio message from one end of the country to the, to the other and back in one day. All right, uh, hello is one of the uh, themes, uh, I, I think we may have uh, sent you a link to uh, the, this video. Uh, Hello is, tells us about several aspects of a ham radio. First of all, oh, uh, okay, let's go down one. Oh, oh. We come from all walks of life. Uh, rich people, poor people. Uh, there's you know, in, in the olden days, uh, people even uh, made their own uh, radio tubes if they couldn't afford to buy one. And we have Nobel Prize winners as and astronauts and uh, just uh, plain people like us. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't think I can get the sound on this. No. Okay, we uh, do mountain topping. Uh, we go have people in uh, different countries. Uh, actually, there's uh, almost three quarters of a million hams in the United States alone. And uh, there are about two and a half million in uh, the rest of the world. Plus uh, about uh, six or seven orbiting the earth. Uh, we have uh, hams who have gotten their licenses at uh, age seven, and uh, we've had uh, people in their 80s and 90s also get their licenses. So it's uh, not beyond anyone. Okay, emergency radio, that's uh, one of the um, major topics that we're, uh, we're doing. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into uh, that in just a little bit. First of all, where we come from. You see these uh, people taking their exams. And uh, I, I happen to uh, coordinate the exams that our club does. And uh, there are three classes of, of uh, license. Uh, the uh, beginning one is uh, the technician. Uh, you have to take them in the order. You get your technician then uh, you can pass the general and then the extra class. Uh, technician is the, uh, I guess, the uh, least amount of knowledge uh, that you need to uh, pass to, to get a uh, license. A uh, little more experience, a uh, little more uh, uh, algebra for the general class. And then uh, it gets uh, fairly complicated uh, when you get to the extra class. It's almost like uh, radio engineering. Uh, so you, you have a real accomplishment once you pass your uh, extra class. And here's my license, a copy of my license. I see it's expired. I, I renewed it. It expired uh, in October. But uh, this is our ticket. I'll call it a ticket. And it uh, just gives you the, uh, the privileges. 
Uh, most of the uh, privileges are regarding frequencies that you can use. Uh, for the most part, a technician can only use the, uh, the higher frequencies. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, a little later. But uh, there, there are some uh, uh, real perks. Uh, there's one band, a radio band, the 10 meter band, uh, which uh, can get very long distance communications on it during the right time. And uh, you have privileges on that, voice privileges. But cell phones are better, aren't they? Okay, this is a 2013, the Boston Marathon. When the bomb went off, the authorities stopped all the cell phone towers in the area. They were afraid that uh, someone else was going to dial in another bomb. And we also find that when uh, more than 5% of cell phone users are on at the same time, they can overwhelm the system. So uh, it's, it's kind of, communications are kind of uh, limited. So here, here's my view of a cell phone. And a cell phone is a, uh, a radio transmitter and receiver. And it does go through uh, what amounts to a repeater, which we'll uh, get into uh, later on. But uh, it does have its limitations. We're different. We, you and the recipient, we can either make a direct contact radio to radio, or we can use an intermediary uh, radio station that will pick up my signal and then rebroadcast it over a very wide area. All right, another aspect of uh, ham radio, we do that. I'd like to introduce you to my laboratory and uh, we can uh, do many great things. Uh, actually, uh, radio uh, astronomy was a, uh, a fairly new science and uses a radio receiver tuned to uh, uh, somewhere around 400 uh, megahertz to map the entire universe. And of course, uh, more humbly, we can talk to uh, uh, various satellites, use the satellites as repeaters, or talk to the International Space Station. Okay. Uh, this guy is a radio engineer. He's very enthusiastic. It was way back in uh, 18, 1864, uh, a physicist named Maxwell found a way of explaining the behavior of electricity and magnetism. And he found that they followed the same rules. Uh, there was only, there was one constant in that, which was the speed of light. Later on, a fellow named Heinrich Hertz did some experiments with, uh, with this, and he found how radio waves behaved. He, And what he did, he had, he made a spark and he found that another spark gap, not too far away from the original spark would also spark. It was picking up something that this was transmitting. Now uh, he, he wasn't too proud of it because it only had a range of about uh, 10 or 12 feet. So it uh, took a little more work to uh, get things going. And let's see, do I have it? No, I don't. Okay. All right. A fellow named Guelbo Marconi went to Newfoundland. He set up a kite to hoist up his aerial. And he had a radio station in England start a series of the letter S. Dit, 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 dit which uh, they sent constantly over a, a couple week period. And one day he was able to receive that long, long distance uh, S. 
that was the uh, first sign of uh, intercontinental radio communications. And he used, you know, here's, uh, here's Guelmo himself. Uh, later with all of his inventions became a, uh, quite a rich man and a, uh, a member of the Italian government and so on and so forth. He's a pretty good guy. The secret to this, this was a very high tech at that time, 1901. This was called a coherer. It's a bunch of iron filings. And when a radio signal was picked up, the electrical charge would make all these iron filings line up and conduct electricity and make a click. And uh, after it made the click, someone would have to use a, a wooden mallet to pound the, uh, the iron filings back into a, you know, to scatter them again for the next click. Four years later, how to make a wireless telegraph system. Any other boy can easily make one for himself. I am 11 years old. This is one of the first hands I would, I guess, uh, say. And uh, people started uh, making their own radio sets and getting on the air. And now, From microchips to robotics to time and space itself, makers in the amateur radio ranks build and explore new ways to play with the radio spectrum. Uh, this is a tuna can transmitter made of uh, well, little bits and pieces of uh, things. And uh, with the right type of antenna, you could uh, go hundreds or thousands of miles. Uh, you probably don't see these very much anymore, but inside this light bulb was a circuit board that had all sorts of parts. It was like an Easter egg of, uh, of parts. And there was one ham who actually took the parts out and made a radio transmitter out of it. Innovative. One of the things we do, uh, one of the uh, things that our license allows us to do is to make our own equipment or modify our own equipment. Uh, you can't do that if you have a CB. You can't. You have to have an authorized person to uh, fix it or change it, and uh, any of the other uh, services. Uh, heaven forbid if you're uh, an aircraft pilot and want to fix your own radio, unless you have the uh, the proper certifications and licenses, they won't let you. But in our own service, in the ham service, we can do it. Happy birthday! This is a Mylar balloon. It had a little transmitter and a uh, GPS attached to it. Left Australia, went across the South Pacific, South America, South Atlantic, and ended up in uh, Madagascar. That was the first try. There were people all over the world who were able to monitor its progress. And one day they found the wind was so hard that it blew it back and had to uh, go, go on again. Uh, the second and third times, it actually went around the world. And uh, actually, it's, now it's quite a sport. A lot of people are uh, doing it, putting their balloons around. OK. You just heard the $50 satellite or Eagle 2. It was a whole, a micro satellite made from mostly uh, old Radio Shack parts and decide, designed to fit in a 50 millimeter cube. The Russians launched it along with other university experiments. Uh, you can see how makeshift it was. Uh, you, the aerial is actually uh, pieces of a, uh, a ruler. Uh, these are batteries from a, uh, these are just solar cells and uh, used a, uh, a battery from a uh, camera. It was uh, launched and it actually uh, 
st started transmitting, again, kept on transmitting every, uh, oh, for about a year and a half. One of our, uh, one of the, one of the builders is in the area and uh, I'd see him at uh, meetings and uh, swaps. He'd uh, run outside and when he knew the satellite, his satellite was going over the, uh, the building and he picked up its uh, telemetry, the signals, told uh, how it was rotating, what the temperature was and so on and so forth. And eventually the, uh, the solar winds uh, sort of uh, abraded the, uh, the solar cells so they wouldn't work anymore. So it just ran out of juice. Still, it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good training. All right, here's a uh, transceiver that doesn't have any dials. Uh, nothing here. And uh, you need a computer to read it. And actually, most of the uh, radios that are uh, being produced today can run off your computer. I have a program which I'll uh, demonstrate uh, in a later session uh, how I can control it. I don't have to turn the dial. I can just uh, swish things around, push buttons on the, uh, on the mouse. So that's us. Uh, any questions on that? Okay. Okay. Now, I guess we should uh, get back into the uh, get into the uh, program itself. All right. Um, okay. Now. Um, all right, we've sort of gone through uh, gone through this. I'll get into the uh, half inch deep discussion about electricity and electromagnetism before we uh, get into uh, radio waves. Okay. Okay, Bob, can you see that? Yes, I can. Okay. It says potato battery, but it looks like a lemon. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll find something. Anyway, uh, you see a coin and you see a strip of probably aluminum foil. And uh, it can actually, the chemicals actually produce electricity. Uh, current folder. All right, electricity is a flow of electrons around a circuit. And uh, I have some really nice animations. Uh, you can sort of build your own circuits and things of that sort. We'll uh, demonstrate that uh, a little later. And you can see, as we learned in, uh, I guess, middle, middle school or junior high school uh, science, that uh, there are some elements that can lose electrons pretty pretty easily, and uh, things like copper will lose electrons at a very fast pace. That's why wires are made out of copper mostly. You can make make them out of silver, but it's a little more expensive. You can produce electricity through a uh, chemical process. You know some kind of a, um, a medium like uh, an acid and a couple of elements, uh, zinc and uh, I think uh, iron to produce electricity. Okay, that's real acid. And there's enough electricity that generated that could actually light up a light emitting diode. Or, how about uh, Sunlight Direct? Uh, one of our uh, members, Reuben, uh, just installed a, uh, a whole roof complex and uh, he's, he's producing his own electricity. Uh, 
you'd like to uh, you'd like to uh, actually have a battery to charge up. So uh, when the electricity goes out, when that hit, it hits the fan, uh, then uh, he'll have his own uh, production. But at this point, it's uh, something like fifteen thousand dollars extra to uh, put a a good battery in. So he's he's waiting, maybe for his bonus. Okay. All right, now that's electricity. Now, let's see, where's my magnets? Hmm. My goodness, I don't have, hang on a sec, I'll, I'll get on. I guess I'll have to get out of this and find my uh, my magnetism thing. Okay. Hang on a sec. Okay. Okay, here we go. stop sharing for a second again. Let's get this thing going. Okay, am I sh am I sharing right now, Bob? Bob? Not yet, <clears throat> not yet. Okay. How's that? There we go. There we go. Yep. Okay. Now, you saw a flow of electric current. That was one way, chemical way. That's the electrical way. Uh, this is the electromagnetic way. I have here a coil of copper wire. I have a light bulb and I have a voltmeter. Uh, field lines, okay. Okay, you probably uh, remember those uh, woolly woolly toys that you got when you were a kid, a bunch of iron filings and you could um, use a magnet to uh, distribute them. Now what happens, these, elect these magnetic fields going through a conductor, a, a copper wire like that, will actually knock electrons off the copper and cause an electrical current to flow. And you can see that it's, depending on the polarity of the magnet, it will either knock them in one direction or another direction. Uh, if you keep on doing this real fast, do it uh, you know, 60 times a second, you're going to have what is called household current. Now, instead of sliding it back and forth, you can put it on a little pinwheel and rotate it around and around, which is what they do uh, down in Monroe with the uh, electrical power plants. Okay, so you have a flow of current like, like this. Uh, so that's, that's produced by 
electromagnetism. Uh, you're going to find a bunch of radio parts next week that operate with this. And you're also going to find a bunch of uh, parts that operate with uh, direct current with uh, just you know the chemical type of uh, production. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, let me stop share here. All right. Let's share again. Where's my Kindle? Here it is. Okay, can everyone see the, uh, the book now? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, what, we what we're doing, what are uh, boxes, the boxes that we buy and uh, talk into, what we're doing, we're creating a whole bunch of electrical current. Uh, it's mostly uh, alternating current. It's processed in a certain way. It might have uh, voice impressed on it or uh, uh, some computer uh, gibberish on it, or you might just turn it on and off. That's uh, another way of communicating. But it's uh, just electrical uh, currents. It's not doing anything. It's not getting anywhere. When it gets to the antenna, the antenna is the device that actually turns the electrical currents into radio waves, electromagnetic waves. And the same way, if an electromagnetic wave hits an antenna, it turns it back into a current. So you can send out these electromagnetic waves or you can receive them. Now, we're going to talk about the uh, behavior or, so, or so, some, uh, some vocabulary about the uh, electromagnetic waves. And uh, it'll eventually sh show you how antennas work and uh, so on and so forth. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, one thing they uh, make make sure you know: turning a transmitter output into radio waves is called radiating a radiation. Now, this is not the kind of radiation you'll find uh, uh, coming out of. Uh, uranium or uh, radium or anything like that. It's not harmful uh, that, that much. In our safety session, we'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, exposure to uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, radio uh, radiation. So you shouldn't be afraid of it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not going to uh, really drill you on, uh, on this. But you know, if, if, if somebody needs uh, you know, some ex extra help, maybe we can uh, do something on the uh, office hours uh, with, with this transforming, um, well, how many volts are needed for one kilovolt, 1,000 volts. Milliampers is how many amperes. So you have to uh, either multiply or divide by uh, this factor. Okay. All right, we're talking about frequency. And uh, let, let me get into uh, this. Number of times a second that an alternating current makes a complete cycle. Now, one of the things that's, uh, we talk about wave theory, I'm going to uh, do something uh, Let's see. Okay, the same theory seems to uh, work with sound, with uh, uh, water waves, uh, with waving a clothesline or uh, radio waves. And it's uh, like this. You can see the top, if I start, Humming, uh, 
Uh, uh. You can see that the, there are waves going on. And uh, let's let's take a look at some waves. Oh, I hope I don't, I didn't uh, get rid of it. Oh, shucks. I'll have to go, okay, I'll have to stop sharing again and uh, go back and pull out my, okay. Where's my animations? Uh... What? Damn it. Okay, now I can share again. Okay. okay, you got that, Bob? Yep, it's working. Okay, it's working. <laughs> hey. Okay. All right. This is the uh, the same kind of ruling that uh, a radio wave or a, uh, a voice uh, in the uh, in the air will uh, do. Radio waves can go through vacuum, can go through anything. A uh, voice needs some sort of a medium. It needs either something solid, a piece of wood or uh, metal. And uh, of course, uh, with a string, you need a string. So what, what we're seeing here, it's going, we're, we're producing it by making something go in a circle. So it's going up and down, up and down, according to the circle and the angle of the circle. Now you can see there's a peak and there's a low. Um, let's see if I can stop this. Okay. One cycle of a string starts with, well, we can start here with a minus, go to zero, go to a positive a peak, a plus, and back to zero. That is one cycle. You, you can uh, take it from uh, almost anywhere, from zero to minimum to maximum to zero. That's one complete cycle. Now the the higher it goes. It's called amplitude. So that's the amplitude of the wave. The frequency of the wave is how many times per second or what, what have you that it goes. For instance, this is going at, well, let's, let's put it on normal. It's supposedly going at uh, zero times per uh, per second. There's one half times per uh, second.
And this is one called a cycle per second, except we don't call it cycles per second anymore because uh, back in the 1960s, the scientists decided to honor a bunch of, of uh, pioneers with uh, names. So instead of one cycle per second, it's one hertz per second or a thousand cycles per second would be uh, a kilohertz or a million cycles per second would be a megahertz. Okay, uh, any questions so far? Hey, Jerry, just for the fun of it, um, how high does that freak, how high can you adjust that frequency? Okay. Can, can you get it up to, oh, just three, okay. Just three. Okay. I, I was I was hoping you could get it up to 256. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> because because 256, for those of you who are musically inclined, 256 hertz. Oh, of course, it's within the auditory range. And it sounds like this. Oh, hang on. It sounds like that. For those of you who are musically inclined, that's middle C. <laughs> ah, that's right. Someday I'll learn that. My wife bought a keyboard and it's been a couple of years, but uh, yeah, well, someday I'll learn it. Uh, anyway, so radio waves also follow this law. Now, here, here's, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it in a minute. So let's. Uh, Let's say goodbye to uh, our uh, wave maker. It's a very cool graphic. Yeah, uh, actually, I'll, I'll be emailing all of you a, a sheet with links to uh, these things. Uh, there's some really cool stuff. The uh, Department of Physics at uh, University of Colorado in uh, Boulder uh, made them up some years ago. So uh, good explanations. Okay. Any questions so far? Jerry, quick question. What was what was the device you were using to capture your voice? What was what was that instrument? Well, um, ordinarily I would attach a microphone to an, an oscilloscope. Uh, well, let's see. Okay, uh, this is called an O-scope. I have an Android uh, device. Oh. Yeah. And uh, it just picks up audio stuff. And uh, it'll uh, I'll pretty much give you a, a line of uh, what frequency range it's at. Like, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh. You can see the bottom, the, uh, the, the amount of power, it's uh, what frequency. And this yeah. just gives you a, uh, a scope of uh, what what I'm saying, you know, the talking signal, or if I, you know, if you hum, turns into uh, a constant wave like that. That's so, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was. It's it's free. I, I'm I'm a miser, so <laughs> so uh, I, I like to get uh, free apps. All right, no, not no, not so much of a miser. Okay. Now, uh, where was we? Okay, let's go back to go back to Kindle. Okay. Um, okay. Now you can see. Uh, if you remember what we explained uh, last time uh, about the book, these are the question numbers that are in the back of the uh, manual. So you can actually go to T5A12, find the question, and uh, it it does have it does have the answer. What you can do. 
I, I don't think anyone does it, but you can see this uh, this uh, line here. Some people will fold that over so uh, they can't see the answer. No, whatever works. So I know that uh, Kindle and so, some of the other apps will uh, actually make flashcards for you if you uh, need, need that kind of uh, reminder. So anyway, uh, we answer things like what describes the number of times per second alternating current makes a complete cycle and uh, anyone know that? What describes the number of times per second that an alternating current, that alternating wave, makes a complete cycle? If it does it 60 times a second. It's a frequency. Yep, frequency of 60 cycles or six, 60 hertz. Unit of frequency, as I mentioned, is uh, Good old Heinrich. Heinrich who? Hertz. Hertz. Proper abbreviation for megahertz. That's an, a capital M, a uh, capital H for Heinrich or Hertz and a Z. Lowercase z. Lowercase z. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We saw on that uh, little wave uh, machine varies in strength or amplitude. And talking about uh, this change called is uh, called oscillating. As the sing signal oscillates, as my vocal cords uh, vibrated, it went up and down, up and down, just like the uh, no, signals oscillate, <laughs> like that. <clears throat> okay, I'll tell you what. Let's let's go to something else. Okay, we got that? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay, another picture, <coughs> excuse me, another picture of uh, a wave amplitude. Uh, if I start here, what would be the end of this complete wave? If I started here, counted my, started my wave here, started looking at my wave here, what would make a complete wave? Well, the top of the start, next peak. Pardon? The top of the next peak. Okay. Is that you, Rich? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Are, are you an electrical engineer? I'm an electronics technician. I've been doing this stuff for like 30 years. Okay. Yeah. So you know some things. Okay. Good. Good. Well, I'll ask you about periods and uh, stuff we don't get into uh, uh, discharge of capacitors and this. Uh, in this license uh, class. But anyway, if you have, well, it's going to do anything, but serenade you. Okay, you can hear this. And you can hear quite a few different tones in this.
you're hearing the original vibration, which is probably like this, but you're also hearing other little shakings, which are multiples of that fundamental uh, frequency. Second harmonic and the third harmonic. These are all mixed together in that uh, one tone. And that causes a, a lot of problems to it for us uh, sometimes, because uh, if you have a radio signal that has a lot of harmonics, some of the harmonics might land in a place where it's interfering with someone else, like uh, radio navigation or something like, of, of that sort. But anyway, and also in ham speak, uh, guys will talk about their harmonics, which are their kids. Okay, amplitude we talked about, frequency we talked about. All right, a period. Okay, uh, Rich, tell us about periods. That's probably early in your uh, training. Because we certainly don't use them very much. Right. Pardon? I, I didn't hear the question. I know about periods. You know about periods? Okay, tell us yeah. what a period is. Well, it's basically the time it takes for one cycle. Okay. So it's another way of... Uh, uh, actually uh, measuring frequency, All right? Mm -hmm. The fundamental is the, now we, we can electronically produce a fundamental frequency, uh, a couple of ways of doing it with coils and capacitors or with a, uh, a, a piezoelectric crystal that will uh, you know, just shock it and it'll vibrate at a, a, a certain frequency. But embedded in that uh, fundamental frequency are harmonics. Okay. These electromagnetic waves made of electro and magnetic uh, energy. And they look like a sine wave. Um, let's see if I can find my picture of uh, A picture of the No, I guess all I can say, let's get back to uh, all I can say is that the electric magnetic and electric wave and the magnetic wave are uh, 90 degrees away from each other. They're uh, perpendicular to each other. They're usually shown as the uh, electric waves as the top, the, uh, I guess that's the, uh, the y-axis and uh, the uh, magnetic uh, wave is in uh, the uh, x-axis and it's going through time, which is the z-axis. And as, uh, Maxwell and Hertz proved electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. Okay, you saw the uh, the that uh, coil and uh, magnet moving electrons in an antenna take the place of the moving magnet. And 
A signal from a transmitter can make the electrons of an antenna move, transferring the energy from the signal to electromagnetic waves. The antenna will do the job for us. Works backwards, as I mentioned. Electromagnetic waves encountering antenna make the, its electronic electrons move in sync with the wave, and our radios can translate that back into audio signals or uh, computer signals, whatever it uh, takes to receive. Okay. Now, let's uh, let's think of a very very large dial radio with a very very large dial. Uh, one one of the radios uh, that uh, was very popular in the nineteen forties and fifties, a um, national radio called an HRO, and it had a dial which was the equivalent of something that's almost 30 feet long. <coughs> okay. The very low frequency uh, range is three to 30 kilohertz. Now that's also most of it is in the audio range, but uh, believe me, in the in the history of uh, of radio communications, I found that this was very very active, uh, somewhere around uh, oh uh, seventeen kilohertz or thereabouts. Uh, radio signals uh, were generated by uh, actually uh, an alternator. Uh, pretty high power off an alternator. And uh, these went uh, seven to 10,000 miles. Uh, later, later on, we'll, we'll find out that uh, the hams could do that with uh, different circuits and uh, a lot less power. Low frequencies, there's not very much going on right now, but uh, the LF is. Uh, 30 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz. Uh, sometimes that's used uh, for navigational aids. And also uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, foreign countries that have still have radio stations operating on the, those frequencies. Medium frequencies, 300 kilohertz to three megahertz. Uh, we're all familiar with the AM band, which is uh, what 530 to 1700 uh, uh, kilohertz, and uh, used to be right on right here, right around 500. You would find a uh, an emergency frequency. All ships at sea on the hour would listen for distress signals. Uh, but uh, things changed, so equipment changed, so they don't do that anymore. Now here we're going in the short wave area. Uh, back in 1913, when the, uh, the federal government decided to regulate uh, radio, they said, uh, the hams are a pest. Let's uh, put them where no one, can he no one can hear them. Let's put them up here in this, in this, this whole area. They found that the shortwave area was hugely prolific uh, you know, with uh, radio signals. You could put signals all, all around the world, pretty much. So uh, their squashness didn't work. Anyway, from 3 to 30 megahertz, you have uh, uh, pretty much the uh, shortwave range, long distance range. OK very high frequencies. Uh, things are changing a little bit. I'm not sure whether uh, TV is still uh, on there. It migrated uh, when it got digitized. But uh, right around 50 megahertz, right around here, is uh, a, a uh, ham radio band, which is uh, fairly popular in some parts of the country. 
when you get to two hertz FM, goes to 108 megahertz. Get up to here, you uh, to around 144 to 148 megahertz. Uh, you have the two meter band, which is so uh, the most popular VHF band. UHF still have mobile phones and TV, but 300 megahertz to three gigahertz. These are all, all questions on the exam, uh, UHF, VHF, and uh, HF. And uh, at 440 megahertz, you'll find a, uh, uh, another ham band. Uh, then right up near the top, right around uh, 900, and then uh, 1200 megahertz, you'll uh, get into uh, a couple more hand bands. And then, oh, up uh, 2450, somewhere around 2400, there's another hand band. And then up above here, there are uh, some hand bands, SHF, super high frequencies, and I guess it's extra high frequencies. Now, one, th one thing, let's see, wavelengths. Well, we'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to that in a minute. Parts of the spectrum allocated for a common purpose are called a band, such as the AM band or citizens band. That's a range of frequencies, for instance, uh, 3.5 to 4 megahertz would be the uh, 80 meter band. Now, oh, uh, one, one other thing. Uh, today, our amateur license uh, allocations give us a little taste of just about everywhere. We have, a, we have one frequency, 137 kilohertz that we can use for extremely low, you know, low frequency operation. Uh, there's another one at uh, about uh, 400 and, uh, I think it's 480 uh, kilohertz. Then all the way up through here, there are uh, about six bands here and various bands uh, going all the way up. Uh, after you go above 30 gigahertz, uh, they don't care what, who uses it or whatever. And you probably have to be fairly rich to uh, afford equipment for that. Okay. Am I talking to air or uh, do, do we have any questions? Yeah, I have a quick question. What would be the benefit of using the super low frequency? Well, super low frequency, um, as, as I told you, uh, these old uh, mechanical uh, uh, transmitters, uh, uh, you would use uh, uh, propagation, radio propagation, which Bob will talk about next uh, week, uh, called ground wave propagation. And it's, uh, it sticks close to the ground and uh, has a, a very long range. Now, we can't use very much power down there, but uh, you know, it's for experimentation. But that, that's, that's the, uh, the major benefit. Uh, there's ba one band right above the AM band. It's called a 160 meter band, uh, 1.8 to 2 megahertz. And uh, at night, it's very, very long range. And uh, you need a, uh, an antenna that's at least uh, 234 feet long. And since I'm on a, uh, a very a city lot, I, I have to figure out some way of uh, using extra coils or something of that sort to uh, get an antenna that works. But uh, that's that's one of my desires. Okay. Yeah, and, and and Heather, remember that um, years ago, I mean, it's it's no longer being used. But years ago, in the super low frequencies, the extreme low frequencies, the military used to use those um, for communicating with submarines. Um, it, I think uh, I don't think the antenna is. I, I think the antenna has been decommissioned and dug up. But there used to be an antenna in Michigan's Upper Peninsula that was um, over two miles long, 
and uh, and it was specifically there to communicate with submarines. And actually, that's been taken up by, uh, I think the Navy still runs them, uh, uh, Takamo planes. These are uh, uh, large planes that have uh, just packed with the radio equipment that will cover the entire range from uh, DC to daylight. And I believe that uh, they will toy an antenna something like seven miles long. And if, if they get into trouble, there's a, a little guillotine cutter that uh, someone can push to, uh, to cut the line. Uh, somewhere between uh, New York and Bermuda, I think there's uh, something like seven miles of cable out there that had to be cut once. Oh, wow. So is the opposite true then? Do If the super low frequencies stay closer to the ground, do the super high frequencies go up more or do they travel differently? Uh, they mostly travel uh, line of sight. Okay. If your antenna can uh, see the other guy's antenna, then uh, you have you have uh, contact. Okay, cool. Yeah. And if you, if you get oh. those... You get those frequencies high enough, and it's no longer radio waves, it's visible light. <laughs> oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. Okay, and visible light is actually uh, electromagnetic waves of, of a different sort, but they're still electromagnetic waves. They still obey the same uh, physics uh, laws. Okay. All right, signals in these bands, usually the same kind for commercial purposes. We share the band across many signals. Uh, there were a couple of bands uh, like the 10.1 uh, megahertz, which uh, we're allowed to uh, use for uh, code only, uh, and code and digital only. And uh, we are secondary to them. If uh, some other service wants to uh, use the band, we have to uh, let them use it. Okay. All right, here's, here's different frequencies. This is in the AM band. Uh, let's see, 800, that's uh, CKLW, I think. I'm not sure, I think there's a sports radio on uh, 1000 kilohertz. 1310, uh, isn't that a religious station in the uh, Detroit area? But you hear as you tune your radio, you'll see that uh, the signal gets louder. Then, as you get, get, go away, it starts getting a little distorted and uh, then disappears. Yeah, 552, 17. I don't know about 550. I think I, think I heard a Canadian station on 530. Uh, it was in French, so I don't know exactly what they were uh, talking about. All right, a radio wave carrying information is a radio signal. Now, you can have stuff going on. Let's see. Okay, uh, that's... 14.322 megahertz. And uh, what is it telling us? It's not really telling us anything. I could probably rotate my uh, antenna to uh, kind of zero in on it. If uh, someone else does it and uh, we coordinate, we could uh, locate where it is, but it's not telling us anything. If uh, Someone is, uh, let's, let's go back to here. You can hear the different tones, which means that some kind of information is being impressed on them. 
as I said, if you if you had that uh, that one uh, carrier that was uh, that we listened to on the, the fourteen point three four seven, if somebody kept tr started turning it on and off, you would be putting a code into it, putting some sort of signal that people could receive and get information from. All right, each signal occupies a range of frequencies. It's the uh, actual carrier wave, the one that doesn't do anything, plus what they're called sidebands. We'll get into that uh, a little later on too. Sidebands have the information, usually voice or music or something like that. And receivers tune in to a signal by listening to the signal's frequency. Okay, uh, here's a formula that you're going to have to know. A lambda, which is the symbol for wavelength, is a constant, that's the speed of light, divided by the frequency. So 300 divided by F in megahertz. Uh, you'll get, yeah, as I said. And hams can refer to bands by frequency, like the 50 megahertz frequency or by wavelength. 300 divided by 50, the frequency is six. So we call it the six meter bands. It's kind of loose because uh, if you, uh, no, the two meter band is 144 to 148, uh, but uh, it, you'd have to uh, do 300 divided by 150 to get two meters. So we can't be uh, too, too much of a stickler. Okay. Practice distance a radio wave travels during one complete cycle. Anybody? Oh, wow. Come on, guys, distance, distance. <laughs> That's the wavelength, right? Yes, it is. Yay. <laughs> How fast do it, does a radio wave travel through free space? I don't think we uh, actually mentioned it, did we? I, you know, I don't think so, but um, but, but you kind of did with the with the formula because the three hundred yeah, in the formula, away, yeah. yeah, it's uh, three hundred million meters per second. Yes, or one hundred eighty-six thousand miles per second. Yeah. That's the one that we Americans. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I can't for the life of me uh, figure out why the U.S. never adopted the uh, metric system. But I, I know my uh, my father's uh, garage had to have uh, uh, you know, st the standard English type of uh, you know inch uh, type uh, wrenches, metric wrenches, and uh, even oh. something called Whitworth uh, wrenches, uh, special English uh, type thing. All right, anyway, speed of light. How does the wavelength of a radio wave relate to its frequency? Lambda equals 300 divided by F. And as the frequency increases, the wavelengths get shorter. So when we're talking about 160 meters, we're talking about 1.8 megahertz. And if we're talking about uh, two meters, we're talking about 144 megahertz. So as, as the frequency increases, the wavelengths get shorter. All right. 
property, radio waves, the wavelength. All right, this, this is on the uh, exam. Frequency limits of the VHF spectrum. Okay, it's in your book. So the range 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz for VHF? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. UHF. Three hundred megahertz. Three hundred megahertz to three gigahertz to three gigahertz. Okay. Or three thousand megahertz. You know, do your little conversion there with uh, megahertz to gigahertz. Frequency range referred to as HF. High frequencies. No, just go down a couple of little uh, steps on the chart. Okay, well. Yeah. Some homework. Three megahertz to thirty megahertz. Yeah. What what you have to remember about this is that these are these are continuous. You know, so HF is three to thirty. Uh, VHF is thirty to three hundred, and then UHF is three hundred to three thousand. If you're if you're talking in megahertz, <laughs> um, yeah. The, I think the exam question on UHF asks you for three gigahertz rather than three thousand megahertz. But yeah, so these are all continuous: three to thirty, thirty to three hundred, and these are multiples of ten. You notice, you know, and it's just these three that you, that that could show up on your test. You don't have to worry about the super high frequencies or the or the very low frequencies. It's just these three bands. Question in practicality with when one, say for example, VHS, VHF goes into UHF, is there some sort of overlap when you start getting close to the boundaries that they share? Uh, actually, uh, there, there is a, a bit of overlap. Um, when we start talking about propagation, about uh, how uh, radio waves bounce off the ionosphere. Uh, sometimes if the ionosphere is uh, very, very active, if we have uh, a uh, good, good if we have good, good conditions on 10 meters, uh, it usually means that uh, six meters will have uh, pretty good conditions. Because that's uh, not quite line of sight. It sometimes can bounce off the ionosphere. And there are a couple of other conditions we'll talk about that uh, will give you long range uh, communications even when you uh, don't expect it. Okay. This we talked about 300 million meters per second. Unit of frequency. I know this is going to hurt you. Come Hurt. on. Hurts. <laughs> right. All right. RF. Radio frequency. All types. OK. End of module one. OK. All right. Um, well, we've gotten to a lot of stuff so far. Um, okay, we talked about harmonics and stuff like that. Frequency limits. Okay. Radio equipment. All right, transceivers. 
uh, used to be that radios came uh, separate. You had a transmitter and you had a receiver and both of them weighed uh, 50 to 80 pounds each. Uh -oh. This is a transceiver. It has a, re a re receiver and a transmitter all built in. And uh, you take a look at uh, the diagram here. There's a little switch that switched between the transmitter and receiver. Uh, with my first uh, radio station, I had a separate transmitter and a separate receiver. And I had a knife switch, pretty much like uh, Dr. Frankenstein had to switch between the transmitter and receiver. But uh, it's all built in. It's uh, not usually a switch anymore It's uh, or a relay. It's uh, usually uh, transistorized. So you don't have a whole bunch of clicking it when you send. Okay, XCVR. A uh, very old name for it was RIG. Okay, antenna turns the radio signals from a transmitter into energy, as we uh, talked about. It captures radio waves and turns them into signals for the receiver to work with. A feed line goes from the transmitter into the uh, antenna. Uh, there's hardly any feed line in uh, this thing. Here's the antenna, let's take it off. And that's it, my shiny little feed line. Well, it's a connector, that's all. Uh, later on, we'll talk about standing waves and things of that sort. The feed line can be very important. Uh, feed line can be of uh, different types. Like uh, this is a coaxial cable. And this too is a feed line. It's called ladder line. And I put that into my antenna with these uh, two clips. Put that into my antenna tuner. Okay. Let's talk about repeaters. Any questions so far about transmitters and receivers? Um, one thing, if you go to a swap, unfortunately, we had to cancel ours because of a uh, lack of uh, uh, tables being sold. But uh, if you go to a swap, you're going to see all sorts of equipment, lots of transmitters, receivers, and, uh, and transceivers. And uh, these are you know, known as handy talkies. And there, there are some old ones that are a little too old. They don't have the, the uh, features that you need for modern communications. That's why it's important to uh, attend a few more of our classes so you know what's going on before you buy anything. You don't want to get soaked. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. It says Dart Repeater. That's uh, the local repeater for our club. It's located about uh, a mile, roughly a mile from uh, my house. It's on the top of a 10 story building. AE8 BED, this is W9NPI. W9NPI, 
Bye bye, guys. Bye-bye now. Okay. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, K-E-A-B-E-D. You are also full quieting uh, five by nine. And uh, we'll get back to our class. W9NPI is clear. There you go. Magical demonstration. And that's one of the, just one of the functions of a repeater. There are quite a few other features that we'll talk about later. And uh, simply, okay. When we talk one to the other, uh, Hugh is uh, oh, probably around three or four miles away from me. So uh, I wouldn't be able to talk to him directly with this, with this little antenna. I have an antenna that uh, goes up about 40 feet above the ground uh, on my other radio. So I probably could talk to him uh, on a uh, uh, direct uh, basis if, uh, if I wanted to. But uh, when, you, when you talk uh, one to the other, you, know, you, you, you talk, you push the button, you talk, let go of the button, and let the other guy talk. That's called simplex communications. And uh, when you go through a repeater, the repeater is listening and transmitting at the same time. That's called duplex. Okay, and here is a repeater, transmitter, and receiver, and a duplexer, which enables it to use the same antenna for both of the both transmit and receive. Let's see if I. I had one. Where is that critter? Bus was scuttled away. Uh, they have uh, diplexers or duplexers uh, for a, a fairly low price that you can use for uh, your home equipment. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll worry about that right now. Okay. Most repeaters use FM and digital voice and for uh, data and video. I don't, I'm not sure, uh, Bob, if we have any video uh, repeaters around here. Um, they use slow, stand, slow scan and fast scan TV can be used by hams in different frequencies. Okay. My goodness, that's pretty much where uh, where we are. Okay, so stop sharing. And all right, uh, tell you what, can, can I see your faces, everybody? Okay, I see Rich. Great, great. Hi there. All right, so. Uh, that's that's pretty much what I what I got to say for right now. Uh, questions? I can you know we can hold forth on uh, just about anything you want. Want to know? Can be uh, e either the uh, the lesson we've uh, gone through or any other questions you have. Jerry, I'm a repeater. Can you dial into different repeaters? How does that, how does the repeater work? Is your, do, you know, because there's different repeaters from, you know, all over the area, depending on where you are. Do you, can you switch from repeater to repeater? Okay. Very good question. And it, uh, it gets, uh, gets pretty complicated. Um, all right. I, I lived for a while in uh, Denver, Colorado. My, my daughter's there right now. And, uh, uh, they do have a system of repeaters that link up to each other. So if you're in downtown Den Denver with your handy talkie and uh, click on a certain repeater frequency with all the link ups, you have the eastern face of the Rocky Mountains. 
all the way from Canada down to uh, Texas or thereabouts. You can have conversations with people. And now we have, uh, well, you've heard of uh, VOIP, Voice Over uh, Internet Protocol. Well, we have uh, a system, well, uh, several systems, uh, Echo Link, and what's, what's the other one, Bob? IRLP. IRLP, where repeaters are linked over the internet. Um, actually, if I wanted to, uh, you know, this uh, transceiver has a little uh, uh, telephone type uh, keypad. I can uh, dial in to uh, several thousand different repeaters around the world. As a matter of fact, so one of our uh, members, uh, Bob, uh, you, you run the, uh, the Sunday net. Mm -hmm. One of our members uh, dials in from his repeater over the internet to uh, land with us. He's uh, dialing from uh, Thailand. And he's been doing it for uh, what, 10 or 20 years? He's a missionary over there? Yeah. Yeah, you know, to get to repeaters, um, you can go through Echolink or you can just, you know, go through your radio. You know, there's um, directories of um, repeaters you can get. And, and you don't even have to buy a directory. You can get it online that will tell you the... Um, the frequencies of the repeaters. Um, the cool thing about about well, in fact, even the online things, you know, you can you can search by location. So um, here in uh, Southeast Michigan, in the Detroit area, we have uh, Jerry. I don't even know how many. We I think we've got a, a couple of dozen repeaters. Um, Closer to a hundred. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, all right. That's a uh, dozens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, um, you can you can look up their um, uh, you can look up their frequencies and and the other important information about them about how to contact them. Um, you may need to offset frequent the uh, offsets. Well, you'll learn about that in uh, I think chapter six. But um, there's a couple of data points you need to know about the repeaters in order to hit them and you know if a repeater is simply too far away from you to, for you to hit it then you can go through echo link or one of these other computer assisted um, portals to get into a, a particular repeater in order to uh, join uh, echo link uh, you, you can uh, actually set something up uh, in your own computer you can download a, a computer program which will contact various repeaters around, uh, but you have to prove to them that you have a uh, ham license before they'll authorize it. So, I don't know, as, as uh, an old emergency uh, guy, I start thinking, well, okay, what, what happens if there's an earthquake or something of that sort, the internet's down. That's, that's why I, uh, I think more of the uh, the kinds of systems that uh, we have, just in case. But uh, if if you want to have a schedule with somebody uh, that you know in uh, Colorado, like uh, I tried it with my daughter, then uh, you can do that. You can uh, you know, set up an echo link. I know that I was trying to uh, make uh, some HF contacts uh, with my daughter on uh, twenty meters, and. Uh, the uh, band conditions were so bad that uh, we couldn't make connections. I think we've had about uh, three conversations since she uh, got her general class license. Of course, uh, we uh, use the telephone too, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's. Uh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Hey, Jerry, it looks like you got some questions on the chat. If you look down in the chat. Three questions on the chat. Hertz. Okay, Heather, I'm sorry you can't turn your video on. Any good beginner radios or handhelds to buy that are a nice fit? Um, well, Kelly, 
Um, I guess uh, quality versus price. Uh, there's a, a brand called, called Baofeng, B-A-O-F-E-N-G. Just about everyone uh, sees it. It's on Amazon. And uh, I think, what is it? The UV82, I think, is the, uh, the most popular model, eight, eight watts. And uh, they're, you know, it's what, $50, $60, $70, something like that. Um, not the best quality. But, well, you, you can buy one, one of these guys now from uh, Yezu, which is a Japanese company, uh, for uh, probably around uh, 80 or $90. Much better quality. Uh, and uh, they have uh, service. Uh, if uh, Balfang breaks, throw it away and buy another one. So uh, I, I, would, I would say your, your best bet, that would be a, a good beginner. Um, I'll, uh, I can send, you know, but when the time comes, I can uh, send you some uh, step-by-steps on how to uh, program it, how to put a frequency in it uh, using the uh, dial pad. And uh, there are some uh, videos that will uh, show you how to uh, use electronic means, uh, electronic programs to uh, put the uh, frequencies in, things of that sort. Uh, let me see something. Um, okay. Go back to this. All right. So share screen again. Okay. It's a website called levinecentral.com. All right, uh, let's see, ham radio stuff. Okay, ham repeater. Okay, let's see. Well, let's see, we got Oregon, for instance. Okay, uh, these are the different repeaters and different frequencies in uh, Oregon. Nice, thank you. Looks like a lot close to me. Okay, and you, you can... Uh... Okay, maybe not those ones. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, let's steer the border and all. But, uh, whereabouts are you? Uh, I'm in Corvallis, so south of there. Uh, how far south? Here's Eugene. Not that far south. Albany. Right Fox next to Albany. Corvallis. All right, here's uh, Corvallis repeater. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, awesome. 146, that's two meters, two meters, two meters. Uh, 70 centimeter or uh, 440 and 440. Okay, so you get uh, five uh, repeaters in your area. So uh, go to uh, levinecentral.com and uh, it'll uh, tell you what, what you got. Okay, uh, what about uh, Illinois? Uh, no, I don't see any repeaters in Illinois. I don't see any state. I only see repeaters. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> and of course, uh, a whole bunch in the Chicago area. Let's see. Uh, okay, when you start getting... Uh, out to uh, 
and that's Davenport. We've gone out of the state already. But um, there's, there's Dixon trying, trying to remember uh, where I used to uh, live. There's, uh... Anyway, there's uh, plenty of stuff here. Massachusetts. Yeah, there seem to be a few here. <laughs> yeah, that's great. There's a lot in, in Western Mass. It's fantastic. Well, uh, where whereabouts? You said you were near Adams. Uh, nope, Springfield area. Springfield. Um, yeah. up, up, um, here it is. Okay, so Agawam. Mm -hmm. Springfield, Feeding Hills, East Long Meadow. Okay, you may have to uh, use uh, one of the uh, IRLP or uh, one of the others to uh, get off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, or well, you can move east, plenty of around here. <laughs> A ton in Boston, yeah, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, anyway, that's uh, that's what you knew. Uh, this Levine Central has uh, some other stuff. Um, and it's there's a uh, there's a way of uh, Dividing up the world into uh, grids. And all right, oh, me. Okay. Uh, this is the grid where uh, I'm located, and uh, I'm right around here, right in this uh, this area. Or, oh, you can't. I'm not. Yeah, I'm sharing. Okay, it's right around here, and uh, let's see what it looks like. This uh, this little grid. It's right in a little part of uh, Michigan, and the whole world is divided into these grids. And uh, some people get awards by uh, their their grid squares, things like that. Okay. All right. So that's uh, that's about it. Unless we have uh, any other questions. Okay, I will uh, send you a copy of. Uh, uh, some of these animations. Uh, when we get into uh, electricity and stuff, uh, Bob, I think you have, do you have a uh, set of those animations? Uh, I've got some of them, yeah. I don't okay. I don't know if I have the whole set, but I have some of them, yeah. Okay, we'll compare notes and uh, stuff. Because okay. they have a capacitor lab and they can build your own circuit lab mm -hmm. and things of that sort, which, uh, no, you can uh, actually tie the dog on, and uh, if you put the electrical current through the dog, it'll yelp. <laughs> that sounds a little cruel, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you can put it through a dollar bill or a uh, or a penny or something like that. <laughs> they even had a, a, a hand. I don't know if you remember the uh, Adams family, the, the thing. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> we can put him in there. And uh, it'll me measure the current flow between uh, various things. Okay, uh, one other thing. Um, if you have a, uh, a harbor freight near you, it would be a good thing. Now, let me 
if you don't have a, a good meter, a nice triplet meter or something of that sort, is to uh, get one of these things for about uh, seven or eight bucks. I know they used to uh, practically give them away, uh, you know, buy, buy uh, $25 worth of stuff, get a free meter or something of that sort. But uh, for um, our elementary types of uh, purposes, uh, this is pretty good. Measure voltages, uh, measure current, uh, measure a little bit of, uh, let's see, I think it's got uh, a capacitor in it. No, no, it doesn't. But um, it's handy to have. Wait, what's it called, Jerry? The doodad. <laughs> okay, it's uh, called a, a uh, digital multimeter. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are other things, well, I don't think uh, many of you, of you are going to uh, become builders, but uh, no, there, there's a gizmo. This thing, which you plug something in, push the button, and it'll tell you what it is. Let's see. Okay. Tells me that uh, this, this is a diode. It's just measuring part of a transistor. Let's see if I can get it in the right slots. Okay, that tells us it's a transistor. It gives the diagram what terminals are which and a little bit of value so it does the testing. And uh, these are going for uh, 20 or $30 on, uh, on Amazon or eBay. And you know, it depends on what you want to do. You can get a whole bunch of uh, old parts and put something together. It's not going to be the uh, latest technology, but uh, you want something to do uh, with your afternoons? There you go. And what uh, was that one called? Sorry, Jerry, what was that one? Uh, Sorry, you just put it away and I got up my notes app. Okay, it's not that far away. Oh, it's called the uh, Multifunction Tester TC1. Multi okay, uh, got it. There, there are different, different uh, manufacturers and all that sort of stuff. Common thing is they uh, do have this little socket with a, uh, a lever to lock things in. Cool, thank you. Okay. Until, until you're ready to uh, actually build something, and actually there are a lot of kits. I, I didn't uh, transcribe them into uh, this computer yet. Uh, Hugh sent me uh, pictures of a whole bunch of kits that he uh, put together. There's a company called Bang Good strange name, Bang Good in uh, Hong Kong, which has a lot of uh, very interesting stuff for uh, interesting prices. And I, I just hope that uh, the Bang Good people are going to remain uh, loyal Chinese communists so they don't, don't get arrested. Uh, so they'll continue to sell things. Uh, Hugh, is, is he back in? Uh, not sure. Okay, well, maybe not. Anyway, uh, Hughes built a whole bunch of things. Uh, he even bought a uh, wind generator from them. It was something like a three kilowatt wind generator. And uh, for a couple hundred bucks. So, uh, no, if, if you want, no, our, our hobby is uh, varied. You can uh, make things for yourself. You can build kits. 
uh, do operating, operate contests and things of that sort. And uh, as I uh, mentioned last week, uh, there are some people who just get drones and uh, they, they know that there are a couple of uh, frequencies in the amateur band that are exclusively for hams. Uh, and if they go to a, a very busy uh, drone meet, uh, they're at an advantage because there's not as much interference. Okay, uh, then uh, I will, okay, well, okay, two, two more, two or three more minutes. I'll uh, give you some uh, amateur lore, okay? I'm an old man. Bob's an old man. Rich is an old man. We call ourselves old man. Now, a uh, lady who is not married is called a YL or young lady. A lady who is married, no, she's not called an OW, not an old woman. She is an X young lady, X Y L. And uh, then uh, uh, you'll probably notice that uh, we sometimes enter uh, emails and things with a uh, number 73. That's from the old telegraphy. It means best regards. Uh, there's another one we used to uh, use, but it's not quite uh, proper anymore. Uh, it was called 88, which meant love and kisses. But it's also been uh, adopted by uh, some uh, right-wing ex extremists since uh, 88 means HH for uh, yeah, a guy I don't like to mention. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much what we'll, uh, we'll in induct you into the mysteries of the uh, Wolf Hong and Ready Snitch uh, later when it's time to learn a, a little bit about uh, amateur radio discipline. And uh, you don't want to be whacked by a, a Wolf Hong, that's for sure. Okay. 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 All right. So you guys. Uh, oh, are are we going to do a? Uh, going to do. Want to do hours? office hours? We we can. I, I'm open to it. If uh, if you think there's enough uh, meats, uh, people will need uh, some help on it. Uh, we'll try. Try it. All right, we'll try it this weekend. One o'clock on Sunday. What one to two? Yeah. One to two on Sunday. Okay. Okay, if you'd send us uh, a link uh, to that, we can uh, do that. And uh, Bob and I and uh, Hugh will uh, probably be, right, yeah, Hugh will probably be there too. So, uh, and uh, if, go on with uh, you know, whatever else uh, you're interested in. So, you know, we're, we, we want to teach you how to pass the test, but uh, also how to be a ham. Okay. Good okay. Idea.